Have you ever wondered who owns the UFC? You better buckle up for this. I'm just gonna read very mainstream sources and I'm gonna let you fill in the blanks. And don't worry, it won't be hard to do. So in case we're not clear, we're talking about the UFC, the biggest mixed martial arts fighting promotion in the world. They are owned by TKO Group Holdings, which is owned by Endeavor Group Holdings. And the CEO of TKO Group is Ari Emanuel. And he is also the CEO of Endeavor, the bigger company, along with Patrick Whitesell, the executive chairman. But I guess his name is probably pronounced Ari Emanuel because it's Jewish, not Mexican. His father, Jerusalem-born Benjamin Emanuel, was a pediatrician who was in the Irgun, a Zionist paramilitary group that operated in mandatory Palestine during the 30s and 40s. And just to clarify, paramilitary group means terrorist organization. And just to clarify, that is not my definition or Hamas's definition or Palestinians' definitions. That is literally the Israeli government's definition. In 1948, they outlawed the Irgun and Lehi groups, declaring them terrorist organizations. Basically, everyone inside and outside of Jewish worlds called them terrorists and strongly condemned them. Here's a list of the bombings that they were responsible for. So anyways, his dad was a Zionist terrorist from back when Israel was being formed. And now he runs the UFC. Well, he owns the UFC. Dana White runs it. But that is just the start of this. Because he has two brothers. This one was Obama's White House chief of staff after years in senior positions in the Clinton administration. But there's another one. This one works at the Center for American Progress, the Wharton School, Harvard, and the NIA. But don't worry, the deep state is not real. Oh yeah, and President Joe Biden named him one of the 16 members of the COVID-19 advisory board. All three of those guys, their dad was an Israeli terrorist that even the Israeli government outlawed because their terrorist acts were so fucked up. Like bombing civilians, literally. But wait, there's more because both Ari and his buddy Patrick, who are in charge of that other whole organization in charge of the UFC, they are also both in charge of IMG. They are co-CEOs. IMG is like a sports and media company. They have a whole entertainment and modeling division, including Miss Teen USA, Miss USA, Miss Universe. What does that remind me of? Yeah, you remember Epstein's pimp, Jean-Luc Brunel, who hung himself right before Epstein was all coming out? He allegedly procured more than 1,000 women and girls for Epstein. One of IMG's top representatives described him as a coked out misogynistic pig from day one. Whew. Thank goodness. I'm glad that IMG is not involved with Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, except for this article where a bunch of survivors told their stories and this one said that she worked for IMG. She, she told IMG what he was doing to her over in France or wherever she was. And IMG was like, oh, that's cool, whatever, no problem. And then they continued to send girls to him. Yeah, so IMG worked with him. And IMG doesn't just do modeling. No, no, no. Here is all the sports um, leagues and events that they work with. There's the UFC. They do modeling, consulting, events. Like the Premier League. The big, the highest level of English football. Like the PGA of America. Like the United States Tennis Association. They've got figure skating. They got motorsports. Shit, they've even got the world's strongest man in the US Open of surfing. Are you getting the picture yet? These three brothers, whose dad was a Zionist terrorist, have been top dogs at the Clinton White House, the Obama White House, the Biden COVID response. They control the UFC, a huge amount of the modeling industry, a huge amount of the tennis, uh, golf, all sorts of sports, soccer, rugby. There are quite literal ties to Epstein. And don't get me wrong, I love MMA. I love watching the UFC. But just think about culture. Think about gladiators. Think about Rome. Think about all the other industries we've recently learned have weird ties to sexual blackmail rings. Think about modeling. Think about 
how young boys and girls grow up in America. You know, you know, my entire life, I have said, I've, I've never really been in sports. I mean, I grew up in, like, the Chicago area, so in the 90s, I was super into the Chicago Bulls, obviously. But as I got older, I started not really caring about sports at all because it became very clear just seeing how, like, fanatical people were and just like how people's moods are completely like swayed by if like their favorite team loses or wins or whatnot it can literally ruin people's entire day like people get mad all year if their team loses the championship it's literally just i've always thought it's just like a distraction to you know make people okay like as a release from like their mundane life and to kind of you know draw their attention away from their crappy situation they're in and then you get older and you learn or at least i did you know reading a lot more about like philosophy and ancient history and stuff and how like the coliseum was basically there to distract the people to keep them distracted and happy and and fat and jolly and just completely take their eyes off of the ball essentially of what was happening in the background now as far as these men's dad being a zionist terrorist i feel like george bush anytime i say terrorist terror terrorist terrorist <laughs> we'll see how youtube feels about that word when I upload this, but, um, I do think that people are able to, you know, not be like a bad parent, right? I'm not saying these three guys are actual like Zionist terrorists, like their dad was, but I will say that that influence and authority that their father probably had within, you know, politics, just the connections he made being in that position, even if he wasn't seen as a good guy, he's still like that much notoriety, you're going to meet people and you're going to have connections, right? So I will say that probably has been used to put his kids in a position to where they can help, you know, control the media and sway opinion and, and basically use propaganda to do whatever they want to us. And being that these three men are in charge of literally everything, it seems, uh, entertainment wise, and to see just what like Disney is doing lately and, and Netflix and all these other companies basically just like pushing the message, the message as a uh, nerd erotic and the critical drinker like to say, it, it's not surprising at all. It is not surprising at all. Uh, it really kind of makes you think, like, yeah, maybe the deep state is real. But what do I know? I'm just a guy on YouTube, guy in the FBI van outside watching this. <laughs> I'm just a, just a guy on YouTube, man. Why West supports Israel unconditionally. Western governments support Israel because of humanity. Also, because of the Ben-Gurion Canal Project, which is Israel's initiative to construct a new canal aimed to boost their economy. It's expected to generate approximately annual revenue of $6 billion. The canal offers Western governments a superior alternative to the Suez Canal, which will solidify their control over the world's most crucial shipping route. To construct the canal, Israel must reroute it to avoid Gaza, preventing potential economic growth in the Palestinian territory. The Gaza Strip is seen as problematic for the canal project. So, Israel wants to take over Gaza in the name of self-defense and use the land for their canal project. And the cheapest way to build this canal is by using nuclear explosives. billions of dollars, but it will come at the cost of millions of innocent Palestinian lives. Historically, Arab countries used the Suez Canal to pressure the West, but the new canal gives the West more flexibility in Middle East. This allows them to destabilize Middle East and expand their imperialism. I don't know if YouTube is going to let me post this video, man. Some of these topics already, just in the first two videos you guys sent me. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. I have to say my favorite food of all time is pepperoni pizza, definitely. What's my favorite food is hot, um, a chili hot dog. The first question that you mainly ask me is what my favorite song is. My favorite song is Toxic that I have done. My um, favorite video to shoot was Toxic. And what's my favorite flower? It's a rose. Laura from Orlando asks, what is your favorite type of flower? My favorite type of flower, I love morning glories and I love lilies. My favorite restaurant is Mastro's just because I love a steak and baked potatoes. My stomach is so sensitive. I have a steak. I'll be since like sick for three days. You're kidding me. Mm -hmm. what, what would you tell that Brittany from 20 years ago? I would tell that Brittany just to believe in yourself and never doubt yourself and 
Be strong. My favorite Disney movie is probably Frozen, just because I really like the fact that the two sisters, um, their relationship, and then one goes off and lives in a castle just because she can't deal anymore. Oh my God, such a dork and a nerd. Hello, the biggest nerd. Tell me, what do you remember about this day? Do you? I have no idea. I don't remember. Yeah. The secret to happiness. No, mem no memory. Right really? There. Exactly. That's it. That's it. I yeah. like that. I like yeah. that. Living. Yeah. I try not to really pay too much attention to what's going on with celebrities. Obviously, I do to some extent because videos like this that, that I'm sent and stuff that I watch and kind of try to keep up on for the sake of the channel and the content and just kind of be like a little bit informed, I guess, enough to reply to the video clips you guys send me. But uh, that Britney Spears, the Instagram crazy one, does seem very exaggerated now compared to the other one. Uh, assuming they're taken around the same time, there's a difference. Could be drugs. I don't know. But I have heard theories that they're deep fakes. Like it's her sister deep faking her or just a different person entirely, a, a impersonator or something. And sure, it's possible for people's you know favorite songs, favorite foods, favorite flowers to change over time. I mean, mine does. My friend Devin, his favorite restaurant changes like every two weeks. But at the same time, after hearing that you know people think it's a fake person and watching just the, the like complete 180 just between the inflections in her voice like the the pitch of it or her mannerisms the way she presents herself entirely like just completely like out of her mind like childlike elation uh, and fidgetiness it could be drugs i've seen uh people react to drugs that way where they're just like fuck just right just out to lunch entirely but i don't know that seems a little too <laughs> Assuming those videos are close together, that's a different person. I'm just saying it. that's a different person. There are more mummies found in a time frame by a gigantic margin than there are in Europe or Egypt. In fact, the Smithsonian was caught stealing mummies from Colorado and shipping them to Europe. And the deeper you go, the crazier the things they find. 17 miles northeast of Manchester is a prehistoric cavern in which wonderful discoveries have lately been made. They're on a farmer's land in Ohio. The, the ground shapes downward into this weird depression in his land. What they find when they remove the rocks covering the bottom of this depression is a tunnel into a underground tomb. It contains nine chambers or rooms. They find a well in one of these chambers and 45 feet from the top of that well, they found the entrance to a second cavern, which proved to be the family tomb of a race of gigantic men. Yeah, it's insane. Even a single human statue, if you asked anybody on the street, has that ever been found in america they'd probably say no i don't know how it would be hard for anybody to not believe that there's ancient relics and whatnot here the american continent has been here just as long as any other one and i'm in the understanding or at least the belief that civilization is much older than modern day mainstream science says it is so i'm one of the people that think the egyptians stumbled upon the pyramids and the sphinx if we dig anywhere i think we would find something from a previous civilization some sort of proof anywhere i'm not saying like every like five inches you're gonna find something i'm saying like on any continent anywhere i think if you dig deep enough you will find something assuming you dig in the right spot on a cross look at the type of blasphemy look at that they put a they, they put a they put an idol a demon on a cross straight blasphemy of the lord jesus highway 61 look at this this is a woman leaving a man packing her bags leaving her, her husband look at the short dress look at the red bottoms sexual perversion immorality look at the dog it's a demon she's following the dog leaving her husband adultery look on a crossroads look they even put a red cross look at this and look where it goes up to satan with a guitar in his hand and look at that look, look what it says right there lucifer express 666 you see look I can't make this up, bro. This is in Disney Springs where little kids walk in. This is the first thing you see. Look at look at the art, bro. I'm telling you, man. The devil's a liar. This is in the this is the first spot. Look at this. Look at this, bro. Are you kidding me? We didn't even go a hundred feet. Look at that. That's another demon holding a child. That's a demon holding a child. A man in a coffin. Witchcraft. And like I said earlier, look at that. Look at the blasphemy. Straight blasphemy, bro. And these are all totem poles. They used to use totem poles in the old testament. The pagans would use totem poles for idol worship. Look at this. Look at this, this this angel of light. A fallen angel. But yeah, as you guys can see, the totem poles. When people when people say, you know, you shouldn't have a Christmas tree, when they're in the book of Jeremiah, I believe, when it talks about ornaments on the tree, it was actually talking about a totem pole. This, literally. When the Lord says, do not 
put any ornaments. You see what I'm saying? Ornaments on a pole. They would actually put ornaments on a pole and worship it. It was it was witchcraft. <laughs> All right, that guy's an idiot. No offense if you're watching this guy, but that's stupid. You're reaching. He's reaching. The Christmas trees come from the Vikings, dude. From yes, it's it's a pagan ritual. Every religion is a pagan ritual. Christmas comes from pagan Halloween, obviously. Christmas is Yule, dude. Easter is Ishtar. Like if you go back far enough. Everything comes from something else. I don't know. I'm not a Christian. I think religion is stupid. I think superstition is dumb. I, I think like it leads to people, not always, but it can lead to people reaching like this, that Jesus on a cross, that was just a, a shitty artist. It's just a, the guy was not good at carving wood. That's all that was. <laughs> He's just not good at carving wood. It's not a demon. It's just a really bad carving. Crossroads is a very well-known story in media. It's It's a metaphor for basically giving up your morals to gain something, you know, basically giving yourself up to, to gain something temporarily. Sure. Okay. Maybe some people might disagree with having that there at Disney, but Disney Springs, it's entertainment, it's media. I completely understand them using something like that. Um, also Disney Springs is a really cool spot. I don't live too far from it and it's a cool spot. You should check it out despite what this guy is telling you because it's a great place to take your family and get some food and check out the lego store and all that stuff <laughs> i don't think you're ready for what i'm about to present in this video i really don't think you're ready for what i'm about to present in this video and it all starts in the most unlikely of places a place they want us to think is nothing but a third world wasteland but in reality it's a place fit for a king well, maybe not a king, but definitely an angel. 200, as a matter of fact. 200. So this video could cause severe ontological shock. This is a disclaimer. I've never done this before, but I'm doing it because this one warrants it. I'm not being dramatic. If you're not ready for your entire belief system, your understanding of humans and our place on Earth and our history, to be shattered, do not watch this video, and I'm being very serious. For the rest of you, let's go for a little ride. Our government has come out, even under oath, and said that they have no evidence that we are dealing with extraterrestrials. And I believe them. I didn't used to. Now I do, and this is why. My research has concluded this. The two most common encounters on Earth are the Greys and the Nordics. Okay? The Greys are future humans. They are a synthetic AI fusion. We will table that for this video. What we're going to talk about are the Nordics, which are also future humans. In the future, they had to escape. At this point, they realize they can't escape physically because they're contained in this holofield. They're contained in the solar system. The only way to escape is to actually graduate spiritually, to ascend up. They can't for some reason. So they must escape because of things going on on Earth. They escape to the past. Our ancient humans are the Atlanteans. They developed, established a place called Atlantis. It means the land of Atlas. They came from the future. They went back in time because they had developed time travel. Time travel is basically just anti-gravity. Once you manipulate gravity, you also manipulate time. Space and time are intertwined. Okay. They went back in time. They established Atlantis to escape their future debacle that they got in. Okay. Now, as we go through time, what do we see? This is what led me to this. There's a cyclical cataclysm. Something happens every so many years that wipes out basically all of humanity. But right before it happens, just like with Noah, that's the most famous one, so we'll talk about that. Somebody comes and says, hey, this is coming. Flood's coming, man. Build a boat. Gives them all the information. How did they know? Okay? How do they know what's coming and how they know how to survive? And then after the flood, after every cataclysm, these beings come. Tall, long hair, beards, carrying a bag, and they reseed civilization. So before a cataclysm, they save a certain amount of people. After a cataclysm, they make sure that those people survive and thrive. Why? They don't care so much about the individual person. They don't care if you're happy or healthy or get that raise or anything, but they damn sure don't want humanity to get wiped out. Because if we cease to exist, they cease to exist. They're future humans. That's why they need us. <laughs> Pretty serious vested interest there. Okay, that's wild. Now, when we look at ancient, um, like, civilizations, ancient like in ancient aliens, they're always going to these like megaliths and these monuments, and these temples and, and cities and stuff. And 
they're very advanced, extremely advanced. I mean, cosmologically, you know, architecturally, mathematically, engineering wise, so advanced. There's so many things they did 10,000 years ago that we can't do today. It doesn't make any sense. It's because they came from the future. Okay. Now, this is where it gets super interesting. They also put Easter eggs. They put breadcrumbs in to all of these civilizations. They built these giant monuments. They built these pyramids. They built all these things because they're leaving clues for themselves. They know when they see that statue of the bearded guy with the, the bag that that's them. It's a, it's a signature. That's why it's in every culture for thousands of years. These cultures had no contact with each other, yet they made the statues that almost look the same, right? With the same bag, same handbag. Why? That is meaning that a cataclysm occurred there and these beings reseeded that population. They have to make sure humanity survives, period. But it's like, okay, think about it this way. If you went back to the caveman days and you met a caveman, you wouldn't really care what ends up happening to that caveman. You'd be like, hey, he's going to have a life, a family, a job. He's going to you know, do caveman things, right? And he's going to learn his lessons and all that. It's not my job to intervene with that caveman. But you damn sure wouldn't go back in time and wipe out all the cavemen, right? Because... We come from them. They evolve into us. See what I'm saying? We are like the cavemen to these these people. We can call them people, okay? They're people. They're humans from the future that went back in time to escape something. And then they have to make sure it's a bootstrap paradox. They have to make sure that nothing happens to us. Because if something happens to us, it happens to them. But they are also trying to fix their situation because they don't, don't want to go in a loop. So they have to make sure that they continue to exist <laughs> by making sure we continue to exist but then they're also trying to fix things i think they are carefully carefully editing their timeline to make sure they don't end up in the same place which is why we see mandela effects which is why we see strange time dilation things which is why we see these interventions from them in these subtle ways when it comes to our nuclear weapons when it comes to our you know environment stuff like that they're intervening in certain ways to try to ensure a better outcome for them so this is my takeaway with all this besides just melting your minds for fun <laughs> and remember disclaimer again this could all be just wrong i could just be a crazy guy in the woods for damn sure right i'm learning constantly but this is where my research has led me now and this is why i think it's important to put this out there even though i do think i'm i don't know this is risky in a way but i think it's important because i think that they want us to do better i think the important takeaways here is what we see as gods, you know, the Olympians, the Devas, the Anunnaki, you know, um, these are us. They're humans, which shows our true human potential. And I think it's very important for everyone to realize what we're capable of a lot. But it's a cautionary tale because they had to go back in time because they messed things up, because they couldn't spiritually ascend. And because I think something physically happens to Earth. So we need to do better. We don't want to just go in a loop. If they are us and we are them, we don't want that outcome. We want a better outcome. We need to be better. We need to realize our true human potential. We need to realize what we're capable of. We need to realize that we are the gods. We look at them as gods, but we are them. That is our potential. But we have to use it in the right way. We have to take care of this planet. We have to take care of each other. We have to be better so that we don't end up the way they ended up. And I think that's why they're coming back to make sure that we don't just go in a loop. So, of course, they're ensuring our survival so that they don't cease to exist. That's step one. <laughs> step two, be better. Be better. That's what I think is important here. What do you guys think? I know that's a lot. I know that's heavy, man. That's heavy. It changes everything. It changes religion. I won't even get into that, but the religious part is a big part of this. Um, it changes everything, okay? It changes what we think about a human our history. I think these guys were leaving Easter eggs all through history. I think all of these ancient monuments and monoliths and, and temples and sculptures and all that stuff, they left that. They're leaving themselves information embedded in all this. That's why there's so much sacred geometry embedded in all these, these monuments and these pyramids. They're leaving themselves information. And the only way they know it would, would survive cataclysms, you know, paper won't survive, books won't survive, you know, computers won't survive, stone will, clay will, gigantic monoliths and pyramids will. They're leaving and embedding information. And then they put their signature, their statues of themselves with those handbags all along the way. They are us. That is our potential. That is what we are capable of. So much. We're capable of so much. 
but we're also capable of so much destruction. That's the cautionary tale. Let's be better. Let's make sure we don't just go in a loop. Let's rise to the occasion. Let's be the gods that we know we can be, but let's use it for good. Let me know. What do you guys think of all this? Have a beautiful day. Peace. Wow. That was a great video. I guess he seemed like a really nice guy too. I love that theory. I think it's possible. I think that some species of you know aliens could be from the future. I'm just not sure how time travel works. Does time travel work like the Avengers or like Back to the Future? Uh, is the butterfly effect true? Is that real? See, it's, it's all so confusing. I don't know. I'm not sure if the butterfly effect is true, so I'm not really sure how to approach that, but I think it's cool. I'm in the way of thinking that maybe the pyramids and whatnot were here from a technologically advanced race that was here before us not so much came back from the future and then built it so we would recognize it moving forward but that's a really interesting take i'm um, definitely going to think more into that one i do think that you know an alien race came here at some point like the anunnaki and my favorite and the most believed right the one that makes the most sense to me is anunnaki coming here and you know uh, biologically manipulating our dna with their dna uh to basically accelerate our evolution and built technology while they were here and, and kind of did what they did on the planet here so i don't know man the universe is bigger than we can imagine it's literally you can't fathom how huge it is and how many planets could potentially hold life and and how much older a lot of those planets are and how much older civilizations on those planets are and how much more advanced they are and it, it's nuts like i'm a big sci-fi fan it's crazy to think what the possibilities are, but I mean, I, I'm in the way of thinking that anything you've seen in a sci-fi movie is potentially a possibility of it being true somewhere in the universe, depending on how advanced, how old, how many resources, whatever a specific species is, right? So I, that's crazy. I don't know, but let me know what you think. My brain's going to explode. Uh, <laughs> there's so much, there's so much in this video. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough for sending this stuff through. It's really cool. But thanks for watching, everybody. That's it for today's video. Great clips. Awesome clips, you guys. Uh, Lucid Crew, thank you guys for all your support. Thanks for sticking around while I was gone and coming back to support me when I come back. Life's been crazy lately, but we're back. We're getting back into it. And I'm I'm fully prepared now with my, <laughs> my tinfoil hat. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week, and I will see you soon. Like, subscribe, share if you liked what you saw today. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.